So I got a request about a week or two ago to do a video about eating paleo when you're out and about and not necessarily at home. I think that it's really important to try and stick to being as paleo as possible when you're at home because then when you leave the house, if you do cheat, it's not quite such a big deal really. There is a common um, methodology employed by a lot of paleo people called the 80-20 rule and that is that you eat 80% paleo food and then 20% is cheat meals. I don't personally prescribe to the 80-20 rule because I try not to have the cheat meals because I really don't think that eating paleo is a big horrible sacrifice and that I need to cheat. However, when I do go out I do tend to relax my rules about what I do and don't eat. And I think that that's a really important thing. Be sensible about your 20%. When you're out and about, don't eat starches, eat safe starches and eat maybe dairy or that sort of thing. And don't cheat with gluten or with corn crap. And that's, that's really, I think, the best way of going about eating outside is don't, don't beat yourself up too much if there's no alternative and no way to, to stay paleo where you are. However, with a bit of legwork and a bit of thinking, you can generally abo avoid being in a situation where you have to eat something that's not paleo because there's simply nothing else. Uh, I think that it is really important to always carry with you things like nuts and seeds or even an apple or a banana, just something to nibble on and eat if you get hungry. And then if you are out for most of the day and you just can't find anything that's good, then it doesn't really matter so much. You can just get a mineral water or maybe even a fruit juice from the service station and have your nuts and seeds and your fruit and you'll be fine. And I think that if you've got something to eat all the time, then you won't be tempted to go and buy a chocolate bar, for instance, which you should really be avoiding because they're terrible. Uh, I think that having your friends over for dinner is also a really good way of socializing and sharing food with people without breaking the paleo diet. I mean, you're the one that's going to be cooking. You can put on a beautiful fiesta of food and your friends will be very impressed with you. <laughs> I think that if you're visiting friends, definitely try not to organize dinners at friends' houses if they're not really into food and not really into cooking. If you know that they're gonna just order McDonald's or if they're gonna order takeout from somewhere, rather than cooking something at home, maybe suggest that you go out to the movies instead and, and then go out to a restaurant. Uh, obviously, if they are really intent on cooking for you and wanna have you over for dinner, it's really, really easy to manipulate your friends. <laughs> and by that, I, I totally just mean that if it's summer or late spring or early autumn, you can talk about how beautiful the weather is and how nice it's going to be and Friday night when we're having dinner together, you know, it's forecast to be really cool and comfortable and we can we can eat outside, you know, do you want me to bring the picnic blanket and we can have barbecue? Barbecue is really great for hot weather because the worst thing that you're going to encounter is some sausages of questionable quality on the barbecue, but there will always be... Um, steak or something as well and you can bring a salad and you're pretty much done. Steak and salad is probably one of the easiest ways of eating paleo out and about compared to anything. The other thing is if it's winter and it's cold you know talk about how you're really excited to you know visit a nice warm home and it'd be really cool if we did a roast. How, how you know when was the last time we had a roast that would be really great. Uh, the worst thing you're gonna encounter if your friend puts on a roast is a few potatoes which you will survive. I think that it's great to bring along paleo versions of the big nasties when you visit friends. Uh, the big nasties, in my experience, tend to be beverages. You know, the first thing that happens when you arrive is they offer you a soft drink or a beer, especially in Australia. And if you bring along a glass of wine, a bottle of wine, sorry, and some big fancy wine glasses, everyone's going to want to try a fancy wine. Or alternatively, uh, juice, mineral water, something like that. And then when they offer you a drink, instead of you being like, oh, just tap water, thanks, and they'll be like, really? No, just have some Coke or whatever. Uh, you have an alternative, uh, even if it is just juice and it's a bit of sucrose, but you'll survive. Um, the other big nasty is chips and dips, or as my mother likes to call them, nibblies, at the beginning of when you visit friends. So when they put out that platter and it's got the crackers in the middle and then it's got dips and that sort of thing, there are a whole host of gluten-free dip recipes that you can make yourself and take along on an event such as this. 
or um, you know chicken with a pate or something and then just cut up some carrots and use that for dipping with and then you won't feel like the only one that isn't eating anything on the chip and dip platter. Uh, obviously the worst offender out of everything is dessert. I think that if you're a paleo person you should always volunteer to make dessert or offer to make dessert because it is without a doubt the worst the least paleo out of all of the meals and if you can come up with something like paleo muffins for instance and take them with you then that completely eliminates that problem and you can enjoy dessert with everybody else. I think that it's great to do breakfasts and lunches out with friends instead of dinners a lot of the time. If you're going out for a big breakfast there will always be eggs and bacon and if you take a big fruit salad and you know, pat it out with nuts or something, then that's going to be plenty. I think that with lunches, as long as you manage to avoid the sandwiches, any kind of salad, cold meats, that sort of thing is going to work really, really well. And obviously with dinners, I mean, roasts and barbecues are definitely the easiest way of going about it. Um, in terms of food courts, if you're out at a shopping centre, shopping mall, I think that the easiest places to go to get food that's going to be paleo is the fish and chip place. Just the big thing that you have to make sure doesn't happen is that you don't get a crumbed fish. So ask for fish fillet and no crumbs on it and then get a salad and then that's, that's done really. A fish and a salad is a really really healthy lunch and you can always get it at a fish and chip place in a food court. Similarly, uh, if there's a carvery at your food court then that's really easy to get, a roast vegetables and then uh, roast meat as well and just ask for no bread roll. Salad bars are really good as well because most salads are, are moderately paleo, however please watch out for chickpeas. <laughs> There are so many salad bars now, and croutons as well, there are so many salad bars that will make a perfectly paleo meal and then spoil it with chickpeas, and nobody likes chickpeas, so <laughs> make sure that there's no hidden um, legumes especially, are a big, off a big offender, and just go with the basic olive oil and lemon juice type salad dressing. Um, also you can try sandwich bars, I often do salads, and pizza places often do salads as well. If it's a gourmet pizza place, not so much your standard big box pizza chain, but a more gourmet pizza place generally does uh, salads as well. Um, I think that in terms of like takeaway food or like food on the go, it's generally better to just avoid them and do a bit of intermittent fasting and you know pretend like you're the caveman that didn't get the wildebeest for that day and that there's nothing to eat you know just have your banana and, and survive I really don't think that takeaway food and fast food is a very good um, way to go but that said if you're in a situation where you're starving and you have to get something my general thing that I fall back is McDonald's because they do free-range chicken in Australia so I always order the seared McChicken burger, which is the one without any of that crispy crap on the outside. It's just literally pan seared. Um, I ask for a double patty, so I get two fillets of chicken, no bun and no sauce. So basically you end up with two fillets of chicken breast and you end up with some lettuce and some tomato in a box. And it was really strange the first time I went and I ordered it at the McDonald's drive through the woman literally did not blink an eye. She was just like, yep, cool, and just did it. And I find that in a lot of the smaller places when you ask for no bun or you get a sandwich and you ask for, especially if you go out to a cafe and ask for a steak sandwich with no bun, you'll sometimes get weird looks. At McDonald's apparently it doesn't, it doesn't elicit a weird look at all. So that's just my experience with McDonald's. Obviously most of the patty type things in the McDonald's burgers have got wheat as a kind of binding agent for the mince patty. But with the seared McChicken burger it's actually just a chicken breast seared. I think. <laughs> There's no way to tell for sure, but obviously I'm not a regular consumer of McDonald's. Um, in terms of eating out for dinner, restaurants and that sort of thing, I uh, generally go for pubs. Pubs are really, really easy to get, steak and salad, and I think that any traditional pub will be able to do a sauce that doesn't have any gluten in it. And make sure, because often it's the gravy that'll get you and you'll feel really queasy afterwards because the gravy had flour in it. Even though it's only a little bit and it's not enough to kind of elicit a full reaction, it's something you want to avoid. Uh, salt and pepper on top of a steak generally works. 
Um, obviously steakhouses as well. Anything where there's a lot of meat. Try and avoid vegetarian restaurants. It's almost impossible to get a decent feed when you're paleo at a ve vegetarian restaurant. Despite the fact that there are so many vegetarian options for paleo diet, they, they will always put grains or legumes into the, into the meal somehow. Uh, cafes, obviously, because they do a lot of salads. Lebanese and Japanese kind of places, because they tend to compartmentalize their food. So with Lebanese, you can generally get a kebab kind of meal, where without the wrap, obviously, where it'll be like kebabs, and then they'll have a separate section with vegetables, and then a separate little section with, um, you know, whatever. And then there'll be beans and rice, and, and you can just avoid those pieces of the meal, or at least eat less of it. Whereas um, a lot of like traditional English or even Eastern European type of restaurants will kind of mix everything together in a great big stew and pour a whole lot of flour into it. And I think it's really, really difficult to eat a lot of Eastern European food because of that flour. It's so flour heavy unless you can get something that's mostly meat. Um, Japanese is the same. They tend to compartmentalize their meals so that you will have like the fish here and then the um, radishes here and then the rice here and then, and then you can just avoid the ones that you don't want to eat. Obviously rice is one of those safe starches that if you're out and about it's really really easy to just get boiled white rice if you're happy to cheat and have a few more carbs than normal but you don't want to overdo it. Um, I think that basically the things that you have to watch out for when you're eating out is Mexican because it's pretty much all beans wrapped in corn and I've never seen a restaurant a Mexican restaurant where I can just order off the menu um, watch out when you're ordering chicken and fish because quite often if you get chicken strips or if you get um, a fish fillet it'll be crumbed with uh, breadcrumbs on the outside and that's got gluten in it so you want to avoid obviously sausages because there's gluten inside a lot of sausages when I buy sausages I make sure that I get ones that haven't got any flour inside of them at all I generally get things that are 100% meat and a lot of sausages and even meat patties tend to have a lot of hidden flour in it um, and obviously stuff with really thick sauces where you're like how did they get this sauce so thick without adding flour to it. A lot of really, really good quality Thai and Indian places won't be adding gluten to the ingredients and won't be adding flour to their sauces, but you can never tell, so make sure you ask. And obviously going to restaurants, I say obviously way too much, going to restaurants where there is, um, where there is gluten-free marked on the menu is one of the easiest ways to avoid the worst and nastiest parts of non-paleo eating. I think that you'll always be able to get a juice or a mineral water, you'll always be able to get some kind of meat provided you're not at a vegetarian restaurant and some kind of vegetables. Often you will have to order off the menu or ask can I have this with that instead. A really good way of doing it is if you see that there is a pasta with a side salad and you like the look of the side salad and then elsewhere in the menu there is a steak for instance ask for the steak and then say instead of getting the chips with the steak can I please have the side salad from this other pasta meal and if you mix and match within the menu then they're much more happy to go with that because they've got that salad already prepared and they don't have to specially make it for you um, and obviously when you go out to the pub and you're having a your steak dinner, make sure you don't get chips. Uh, vegetables and salad are generally provided with chips, but generally it's a steak with chips and salad or a steak with vegetables and mash. So what I do is I always ask for a steak with salad and vegetables. And I've seen people out and about in the world order a steak with mash and chips, so at least we're kind of balancing each other out on the strange people eating scale. Um, I hope that helps you guys and I hope that it means that you can eat out and not quite feel so guilty about all of the um, all of the little indulgences and little mistakes that we make when we're eating out. It happens to everyone. I've accidentally ordered things that have been completely covered in, in crumbs before or a salad that's turned out to be completely inedible because it's filled with things that I don't eat and it'll happen to you as well <laughs> and I think as long as you're aware that it's going to happen and you'll just deal with it at the time then you'll probably be okay. <laughs> okay guys I'll see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe. Bye!